Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is knitting update number two. So if you'd like to see what I've been working on recently and how I've been progressing through my knit projects, keep watching. The first item or project that I'd like to share with you is my Friday Slipover by Petite Knit. In my last knitting update, I had finished the shoulders and the front and back panels and I had joined them in the round. And I remember I had actually made a couple mistakes in the most recent rows. So I had to go back. I tinked back to before the mistakes and then I knit the whole body in the round. And I have finished my Friday slipover. So I will show it to you now. This is it. It is knit in this really nice navy blue and I am quite happy with it. So let me start by going through the materials I used to knit this vest and then I'll talk more about the specifics, my experience knitting this slipover and some of the new knitting skills that I learned to complete it. The yarn that I used for knitting my Friday slipover is a combination of a fingering weight wool and a mohair. So the fingering weight wool that I used is the Barocco Ultra Wool Fine in the color 5365, which is this nice navy blue. This is a 100% superwash wool, which is different from what Petite Knit recommended in her pattern. I believe she suggested using the Sen Nescarn Sunday as the main wool, which is a 100% merino wool, I believe. There was another one that she'd recommended, but I couldn't find it in my area. So I went with this one. So throughout my project, I held this wool together with a mohair. The mohair I used is the Sen Nescarn Tin Silk Mohair in the color 5581, which is a really nice complementary navy blue color to the Barocco Ultra Wool Fine. It's pretty hard, I think, to see on camera these sort of darker colors. Um, they, I think the tin silk looks a little bit darker than the Barocco on camera, but I, I think they're actually a really nice match. And the tin silk mohair provides just a little bit of depth or dimension, I would say. Uh, I can't, I can't really tell if you can see this, but. There are some lighter shades and darker shades of blue in this mohair, which I think look really nice together with the wool. So yeah, the Barocco Ultra Wool Fine is a 100% superwash wool and the Tin Silk Mohair by Sen Nescarn is 57% mohair, 28% silk, and 15% wool. So I think this combination will give me um, a fairly warm product. I will not be able to wash my Friday slipover in the laundry. Um, even though this is a super wash, oops, that's upside down. This is a super wash wool, but since I've added the mohair, I won't be able to wash it in the laundry. I'll, I'll definitely need to wash it by hand with a wool wash um, or wool detergent, which I'm fine with since I I think I'll only wash it every few wears, so it won't really be much of a hassle. Uh, I won't have to wash it too often, so yeah, I'm totally okay with washing it by hand. So now that I have finished my Friday slipover, I used about a ball and a half of the Barocco Ultra Wool Fine, and I used a ball and a half of the Sen Nescarn Tin Silk Mohair. In grams, I used about 164 grams of the wool, the fingering weight wool, and I used about 41 grams of the mohair. Okay, moving on to needles. To knit my Friday slipover, I used a set of interchangeable needles from the brand Lücke, which is a Norwegian brand. Um, I used a few different tips and cord lengths for this project. Um, I know Lücke sells sets, interchangeable needle sets, where you can get a bunch of different needle tips and cords all in one little canvas 
kind of bag to organize all the different types and cords. But since I am new to knitting, I definitely could have purchased one of those sets, but it was a little expensive, I think, for me getting right into knitting as I wasn't sure what kind of projects I'd be knitting or what types of needles I would like to use. So instead of purchasing a whole set, what I did is I just purchased the cords and tips individually. So this is what I purchased at the beginning of knitting my Friday slipover. So I got the driftwood needle tips. These are three and a half inch long tips, so they're quite short. And I got them in two different sizes. I got them in a four millimeter and three and a half millimeter sizes. I also got three different lengths of cords. Uh, the middle one is in use right now. I used the 60 centimeter cord for knitting the front and back panels. I used the 40 centimeter cord for knitting the neckline and the rib edges for the sleeves and I used the 100 centimeter cord for knitting the body in the round and it was really easy to just switch out the needle tips with the cords whenever I needed to and having these interchangeable cords also meant that when I needed to put stitches on hold it was really easy just to unscrew my needle tips and replace them with stitch stoppers. I was able to just turn these interchangeable cords into stitch holders which was really great and made for a really easy transition from knitting to putting stitches on hold and picking up those stitches again. So I have just been loving the interchangeable needle set so far. I haven't used any other interchangeable needle sets so I can't really comment on how the Lucke set compares to other interchangeable needles but I have really been enjoying my experience with these ones. So now that we've kind of gone through the yarn and needles that I used to knit my Friday slipover, I would also really love to share the sizing with you as well. So I knit my Friday slipover in a size extra small and I will just kind of explain how my dimensions match or differ from the original dimensions mentioned in the pattern. So in the extra small, the bust measurement should be around 91 centimeters. Mine is like 89, 90 centimeters, so pretty close. And like I said, I haven't blocked this yet, so my measurements might change after blocking. They almost definitely will, but I'm not really sure how they're going to change. I should probably know from the gauge swatch that I blocked. I should have kept track of how my gauge swatch changed after blocking, but I I did not write anything down and I can't remember exactly how, how it shifted in width and length. So it'll be a bit of an experiment with this one. Anyway, yeah, so the bust measurement is very similar, just a little smaller. The back width is exactly the same, both in the measured pattern and my uh, finished project. The back width is about 35 centimeters. The armhole depth is very similar as well. In the pattern, it should be 22.5. Mine is about 21. Again, this might change with blocking. So the one measurement in which my finished project differs from the original pattern the most is the total length. My vest is actually quite cropped compared to the original pattern. This was not intentional. I actually did want it to be the same length, but it just didn't work. And there's a couple of reasons why. One is because I couldn't fit my slipover on as I was knitting it. As I was knitting the body in the round, I was using the 100 centimeter cord and I couldn't fit it over my shoulders to try it on. So, I think I kind of rushed through this one a little bit. I could have I could have done something to be able to try it on before finishing it and casting off, but I I didn't do that. So, I will take that as a lesson and learn for next time. Yeah, I just cast off when it was a little too short, and I think that I can make it work. It, this length does look pretty nice with 
some of the pairs of pants that I have. So I think I can make it work and just keep it short. What I am hoping is that the length might increase a little bit with blocking. So I'll, I'll kind of see what happens when I block it and see how the, the measurements and shape kind of change. It seems like there's a little bit of adjustment that can be made with blocking. It's, uh, it seems like you can sort of stretch your, your garment a little bit with blocking. So I will experiment with that. The other thing I was thinking is that I could kind of undo the bottom stitches and, and rip it back to before I started the ribbing and knit a little more in the broken rib stitch before ribbing the bottom. But if I do that before blocking and then I block it and it ends up being way longer, then that's kind of problematic. So what I'm thinking is I will just block it as is in the short length. If it stays short, it's fine. I can make it work. If it gets longer, great, I can make it work. Um, and worst, worst, worst case, if I block it and it stays short and I really want it to be longer, I can still kind of rip back the stitches and knit a little more length onto the bottom. I saw a video on Instagram by a creator. Her Instagram handle is yarn over everything. And she is knitting a sweater and I think she blocked her sweater as she was knitting it. So once she started getting to the bottom around where she was gonna do the ribbing and cast off, at that point, while the yarn is still on her needles, she blocked it and then tried it on. And I'm wondering if this is a technique I should use in the future for making sure that I get the length I'm hoping for in my projects. When I was knitting my Friday slipover, I didn't know that that was something you could do. So maybe that's something I'll try in the future to make sure I get the perfect length. But let me know if you have done this before, blocking your, your project as you're knitting to figure out the length. Or also let me know if you would not recommend doing that because I really have no idea. I need to look into it more, but I think it could be a cool way to really know what the length is gonna look like in the end. I don't know, it just seems kind of tricky to me to be blocking your project and then have your stitches kind of change shape and then continue knitting. Maybe it would be fine. I just feel like you might end up with different kind of sections, like visible sections. I, I really have no idea. So anyway, that is the finished Friday slipover. And I mentioned in my last knitting update video that I had purchased some coconuts stitch markers. Uh, I think I put a stitch marker every 40 stitches when I was knitting in the round, just so that I had little checkpoints to make sure that I had done my row properly. So yeah, I had like a pink stitch marker at the beginning of every row so I knew to switch from one by one rib to uh, a knit row and then about 20 or 40 stitches after my pink stitch marker I put a green stitch marker and that was my checkpoint to go back and make sure that my stitches looked good and that I was knitting the right type of stitch and then, yeah, I, I didn't really like check in every other 40 stitches, but I marked them anyway, just so that as I, I kind of went past that stitch marker that I, I knew I was always purling the stitch before the stitch marker and then knitting the one after the stitch marker. So as long as I was doing that, I knew that I was doing well. So uh, yeah, these are the stitch markers that I purchased. These are the coconuts. Opening colorful stitch markers. So there are 60 colorful stitch markers in here and uh, I also added my Luke. I don't know what this thing is called but you use it to help change your needle tips and cords so yeah I've just added this in here as well because it's really handy to just have one available whenever I need to switch my needles um, but yeah there are tons of colors in here which make it really easy for setting up those little check marks for yourself. So yeah, I've really enjoyed using these so far. It says on the container that they're a US 11 eight millimeter, 
which I think means that you can fit them on eight millimeter needles, or maybe that means you can only fit them on a 7.5. But anyway, I think these are a really great size for the type of knitting that I've been doing. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of mention my experience with these. And I found that they did really help. In my last video, I had made a mistake in the row. I, I think I knit two rows consecutively where I should have knit one row and then done a one by one rib in the following row. So I ended up with like two rows of stockinette when I should have had broken rib. So I had to go back and fix that. But yeah, using those stitch markers really helped to avoid any kind of mistakes in my rows later on. And I also think that as I kept knitting, I got more comfortable with knitting the broken rib in the round. So it just got easier as I kind of went on with my project. So yeah, that is pretty much everything I wanted to mention about the stitch markers. I also wanted to kind of cover some of the new skills that I learned for knitting my Friday slipover, like the Italian bind off, which I had never done before. I had also never done a make one left or make one right, so I'd never done any leaning increases. I learned how to do those for this project. I also learned how to knit continental for this project as well. Well, I guess it wasn't for this project specifically. I wanted to learn how to knit continental for quite a while. When I first learned how to knit, I learned English style knitting where you hold your yarn in your right hand. I just found English knitting to be sort of hard on my hands and also it just doesn't feel very fast because you have to sort of let go of your project to wrap your yarn around your needle every time you knit or purl. So I really, really wanted to learn Continental, which is where you hold your yarn in your left hand and you can hold on to your work the entire time. I also thought learning how to knit Continental would be good for me as I was kind of transitioning from crochet into knit. When I crochet, I hold my yarn in my in left hand. So I thought Continental would be a more smooth transition into knitting, which I think it was. It worked out really, really well for me for this project because I was knitting in broken rib. So I would have to do a knit row followed by a one by one rib row. And what I ended up doing is knitting the knit rows with like the continental knitting style. And then in my one by one rib rows, I would do English knitting style, which is maybe weird, but I, I couldn't figure out how to purl in continental. Um, I have since learned about something called the Norwegian purl, which allows you to purl holding your yarn in your left hand. But honestly, I have found that alternating between continental and English style knitting gives my hands a break every other row. I have found whenever I am only doing English style knitting for a really long time, my hands start to hurt. And maybe that's something that I can, I can change. Maybe there's a different way I can hold my work so that I don't get sore hands. But I have found that doing one row of continental, one row of English style has really helped to give my hands a break in between. So yeah, I've been really enjoying doing that. The other thing I had never done before knitting this Friday slipover is the folded neckline. And oh my gosh, I just love the way this looks. I think it looks really neat. And I had a lot of fun doing it. I couldn't really figure out Petite Knit's instructions in the Friday slipover pattern for how to attach your folded neckline to your main kind of body. She kind of explained how to pick up stitches inside the neckline and knit your folded neckline into the main body. I didn't have the patience to figure that out so I just searched um, a video on YouTube about how to do a folded neckline and the video I watched explained how to attach your folded neckline by sewing or using a tapestry needle to pick up the stitches. So that was what I ended up doing instead of knitting my folded neckline to the main body, like Petite Knit had recommended. So yeah, I, I didn't do exactly what she explained to do. And maybe it would look, I don't, I don't really know how different it would look if I had done it the way that Petite Knit suggested, but I am happy with the way this turned out. And maybe I will have the patience to learn how to knit my folded neckline down next time. But for this project, 
I think it, it works out just fine. I think it looks good. So yeah, this is my finished Friday slipover. And I think that's everything I have to mention about this. So in my next knitting update, hopefully this will have been blocked. Um, to block this, I'm going to use a wool wash. Uh, I have this little sample of the Soak brand Yuzu. I think Yuzu might be the scent. I don't know. I've never used a wool wash before. So I will let you know how this goes. Maybe I'll buy a full size or try a different brand. I have no clue, but I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to use this to block my Friday slipover. I'm just, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to block this either. I think you just wash it and then you don't wring it out. That's something you're not supposed to do with knit garments because you might distort the stitches. You're just supposed to wash it and then dry it on a towel by like rolling it up and pressing it, but no twisting. And then I think you're just supposed to let it sit out on a towel or I've seen these little like pop-up drying rack things. I don't have one of those, but anyway, I think you're just supposed to lay it out. Um, but since mine is not the length that I want it to be, and I would like to extend the length a little bit, I have also seen people who block their finished garments with a kind of blocking mat, which is just one of those little square foam tile things that sort of attach together like puzzle pieces. Um, I've seen people using those and then they have these little pins that they can use to sort of pull the and shape the garment in the way that they would like. And maybe that's what I should do if I'm trying to increase the length. I'm not really sure. I, I'm also not sure if you can if you can block your piece the way that I kind of explained first, where you don't manipulate the shape at all and you just let it dry flat. If I do that first and don't like the way that my project turns out, can I then block it using this like stretching and pinning method? Will the shape sort of be set once I wash and block it once? Or can you block things multiple times and change the, the way that the stitches lay. I have no idea. So it'll be quite the experiment for me trying to figure out how to block this and I will definitely update you in my next video as to how this all goes and how my slipover turns out. But I just wanted to show my finished Friday slipover. I know it hasn't been blocked yet but I would still consider this a finished project just because I'm done knitting. I don't think I'll be knitting this anymore. It is a little bit of a risk I guess to use the leftover yarn for a different project in case my blocking doesn't work out and I do want to rip this ribbing back and continue knitting the body. But I've already decided on a new project to use my leftover yarn for. So I think I'm just gonna accept that this Friday slipover is not going to be knit on anymore. I'm just going to wash it, block it, and hope for the best. And like I said, I'm actually fine with the current length. It's not exactly what I wanted, but I can definitely make it work. So yeah, I'm just like calling this a finished project. I'm not going to be knitting on that anymore. Moving on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is the project I have chosen to use up my leftover yarn from the Friday Slipover. Um, I have about half a ball of each of the Barocco Ultra Wool Fine Fingering Weight yarn and the Sadness Garden Tin Silk Mohair. I have found a cowl pattern by Anna Wenzel. It is called the Spot Cowl. And I just love this cowl. I think it looks really beautiful. And the way I found out about the Spot Cowl was actually through the Spot Sweater, which is another pattern by Anna Wenzel, um, which uses the same kind of color work pattern but in sweater form and I found out about that sweater from another youtuber um, Danish Musings whose knitting podcast I love she knit the spot sweater in a gorgeous fade she did like a nice brown to dusty blues and then to like a light white beret at the bottom of the sweater and on the bottom of the sleeves and I would love to recreate what she did with the spot sweater pattern. I think her fade is just gorgeous. 
maybe after knitting the spot cowl, I will feel confident enough to try knitting the spot sweater. It just seems quite daunting to me um, since I've never done color work before and the only sweater I've knit is a super bulky weight yarn sweater. So yeah, I need to just kind of do some smaller projects, learn a little bit more, gain some experience in knitting before jumping into a project as complex as the spot sweater looks to me. Um, so yes, in the meantime, with my leftover yarn from my Friday slipover, I will try knitting the spot cowl. And hopefully the spot cowl will be a good kind of introduction to color work for me. So the spot cowl pattern by Anna Vensel is a DK weight pattern. So it calls for two different colors of yarn, both DK weight, and you should hold each of those DK weight yarns together with a mohair. So as you already know, my wool that I use for my Friday slipover is a fingering weight yarn, but I figure if I hold two strands of my fingering weight yarn together, that should kind of equal a DK weight yarn. So my plan is to hold the Barocco Ultra Wool Fine together, double-stranded, with the Tin Silk Mohair, and this navy blue will be my sort of like accent color. So that will be my use for this leftover yarn. And Anna Vensel has posted a version of the spot cowl, which is knit in white as the main kind of body color with a blue as the accent color. And that's what I'm gonna try to recreate. My, my blue, I think is quite a bit darker than the blue that is used in, in her version, but I think it'll still look really nice. Um, I'm gonna knit this for my mom for Christmas. I hope she doesn't watch this video because it's supposed to be a surprise, but um, I think that the blue accent will complement her blue eyes really nicely. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Um, and yeah, okay, so this is the, the blue that I'll be using for the accent color. And I'll show you the yarn that I purchased for the main white kind of like body of the spot cowl. So I picked up two balls of the Sadness Garn Double Sunday, which is a DK weight yarn. And these are both in the color 1001. They are both 100% merino wool, which I think will be really nice for a cowl. And I will hold this yarn together with the Sadness Garn Tin Silk Mohair in the color 1012, 1012. And I think these two held together will make a nice kind of creamy white to be the background or main color for my navy blue. So these are all the yarns that I will use to knit my spot cowl. I am so excited to see how it turns out. I'm also very excited to learn how to do color work through this project. I wanted to wait to start this project. I didn't want to cast on until I had filmed this video because I just wanted to show you the yarn while it's still in its pristine, unused state. But I have been dying to cast on, so I'm very excited. Um, really glad to be getting this video filmed so that I can start on this project. And I also want it to be done in time for the holidays, so time is ticking. I need to get started and finish this project pretty quick here. So. Yeah, super excited to start on the spot cowl. And like I said, I think this will be sort of the intro to color work and intro to the spot kind of style or pattern. Um, I'm hoping to work my way up to the spot sweater. So that is that. Oh, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about the spot cowl is that I purchased a new set of Lucke three and a half inch needle tips in the size 4.5 millimeters. So I will use these with the existing cords that I have. I haven't actually purchased the pattern yet. I've got to purchase it like now so that I can get started on the, on the project. But just from the kind of description that is available on the website before you buy the pattern, I know 
what yarn I need and what needles I need. So yeah, I purchased all those. I think I have everything I need to get started on that project now. So I will get that started in the next couple of days. If you'd like to see some of my kind of like updates as I start projects and as I'm working on them, you can follow my Instagram. My Instagram handle is just Heather's Journal. So heathers.journal. Um, yeah, feel free to follow me there. You might get kind of more frequent updates on Instagram than you might on YouTube just because it's easier for me to take a picture and post that instead of filming and editing a whole video. So yeah, feel free to follow my Instagram if you'd like to follow along with my progress. Yeah, okay, so that's the spot cowl. I think that's everything I wanted to mention about that pattern. Um, moving on to another project that I mentioned in my last knitting update, the <laughs> this fish sweater. It is still not done. I'm still not woven in this end. The reason why is because I think I might frog this. I don't know. It's so hard because this is the first sweater I've ever knit and I like it. I like the idea. I like where I was going with it, but I haven't worn this at all. I haven't like felt tempted to wear it. It sort of just doesn't feel like something I'm really proud to wear. I think because how chunky it is. I use really, really big needles to knit this. So the spacing in between my stitches is quite large. I don't really like this ribbed neckline. I think it's just too bulky. So I'm not like in a rush to frog this. I'll probably just keep it on the hanger for an indefinite amount of time. I don't know. The only thing that I can, well, actually let, let me just Okay, for context, this fish sweater was originally supposed to be a sweater I was going to give to my partner. When I first bought the yarn, I, I crocheted a sweater that I was going to give to my partner. It didn't work out. If you want the full story, I have a whole video on it that you can go watch. Um, but I decided this year that I would like to knit a sweater for my partner um, for the holidays. And I was trying to think of all the different ways that I can make that work. So I started looking for a pattern and I found one pattern that I think would produce a sweater that I would feel good about giving to my partner to wear. The only pattern I found that I think would be good is a cable sweater. Um, it is the family of cable sweaters by Lion Brand Yarn. It is a free pattern on their website. I just love Lion Brand Yarn and their free patterns. I knit the fish sweater with a free pattern from Lion Brand Yarn called the Cozy Campfire Sweater. Um, I just, I love browsing their website for patterns. So anyway, I found the family of cable knit sweaters on their website and I thought, I think my partner would wear one of those, maybe, if I knit one. And I wasn't originally planning on using the yarn from my fish sweater to knit that. Um, I do actually have a ton of other colors left over from the original crocheted sweater. I have like four or five different colors. And yeah, I have all that yarn just sitting waiting to be used. And so I thought, oh, well, I could knit those into the cable knit sweater. But I... I don't want to knit a cable sweater with multiple different colors. I don't think it makes sense to mix color work with a cable pattern. If you have like a textural element, I don't think it really makes sense to mix color work in with that. Maybe in certain contexts, but I just didn't think that it would look good with the mix of colors that I have. So I decided if I'm gonna knit the family of cable sweaters, I'm gonna have to use the navy blue from the fish sweater. I do have one whole ball of the navy blue super bulky yarn left over. Um, so I think frogging the fish sweater and turning it into the cable knit sweater in the navy blue could be a good idea. And maybe I can knit another sweater for myself with the leftover colors. And you know what, maybe once I learn how to do color work through the spot cowl, I can figure out how to do some color work in a new sweater. 
I don't know. Anyway, I decided not to knit that cable sweater because I'm really not convinced that it's something my partner would like. Of all the bulky, the super bulky weight yarn patterns that I found, I think that is the one that he's most likely to enjoy. But I think that a lighter weight yarn pattern would produce a more wearable product product for him. So um, I'm just gonna leave the, the fish sweater as it is for a little while while I sort of figure out what I wanna do. Until then, you may or may not remember from my last video, the mystery yarn, this thrifted yarn that my partner got for me. Um, I used a little bit of the thrifted yarn to add the fish design onto the front of my fish sweater. So this is, I just held the thrifted yarn double to do the duplicate stitching on the front of this sweater. And I have so much of this yarn left and I have many different colors. So this is the thrifted yarn, the mystery yarn. I have no clue what weight this yarn is. I have no clue what fiber, I don't know if it's acrylic, wool, no idea. So I have three different colors that are kind of tricky to see in this bag right now, but I have a gray, sort of a cool gray, this creamy white, and then like an oatmeal kind of color. So, in my last video, my last knitting update, I mentioned a worsted weight pattern by M Knits called the Winona Polo Heavyweight Edition. I thought a couple weeks ago that the thrifted yarn might be a worsted weight yarn. And if it was a worsted weight yarn, then the Winona Polo Heavyweight Edition would work really well to use up the thrifted yarn. Uh, so what I did is I knit a gauge swatch, which is right here. This is knit in stockinette, and I used four and a half millimeter needles to knit this. I brought this to my local yarn store. The person at the yarn store told me that it is not a worsted weight yarn. It's definitely heavier than that, and that four and a half millimeter needles is way too small to use for this yarn. I need to use a six to eight millimeter needle for this yarn weight. So yeah, you can probably tell just from the way that it stands up on its own that these stitches are too tight and that I need to be using a larger needle size. So unfortunately, I will not be knitting the Winona Polo Heavyweight Edition with this yarn that project will have to wait. The person at the yarn store told me that you need about 600 grams of yarn to knit a sweater. So what I did is I, I weighed all of the thrifted yarn and I do have just a little over 600 grams. So I figured I can knit a sweater with this yarn. And I started searching for patterns that would work for a bulky weight yarn. Now that I know it's not worsted weight, now that I know it's bulky, okay, I started looking for patterns and I found, again, my favorite website for finding free patterns. On the Lion Brand Yarn website, I found the Adult Raglan Sleeve Pullover, I think is what it's called. And I think it's perfect. It's exactly what I want. It's a raglan sleeve, which I've never done before, but have really wanted to try. It is a bulky weight pattern. Um, there's no color work, it's all knit in one color, but I figured I can do my own color work and find a way to like use all my different colors of yarn in the project. I was originally thinking about doing a stripe pattern, sort of like the Winona Polo, but I don't, I don't actually think stripes are gonna be the way to go. I don't really like stripes all that much. I don't think my partner really likes stripes either. In some contexts, yes but I, I just don't think a knit uh, rugby style sweater is gonna be right for him. So I started thinking about what I could do with the colors and I, I went and bought the needle sizes that I need for the adult raglan sleeve pullover pattern. So I bought two new 
sets of needle tips, again, to go with my Luca interchangeable needle set. I got some six millimeter and eight millimeter tips. The six millimeter I got in the three and a half inch length and the eight millimeter needles I got in the five inch length. I don't think Luca makes a three and a half inch tip for anything larger than seven and a half millimeters. So I had to go with the five inch length, which is fine, but I did realize I like the three and a half inch tips better. So that was good for me to learn. And the reason why I like them better is just because it makes it a lot easier to knit in the round when you have a short cord. So like 40 centimeter cord works for a three and a half inch long tip, but it's not comfortable for me with a five inch long tip. So yeah, I, I probably won't buy any smaller size needles in that five inch length. I'm gonna stick with a three and a half inch length. Um, but like I said, I don't have the option to get these larger needle sizes in this shorter tip length. So I'll, if I get any needle sizes larger than eight millimeters, I'll just get them in the five inch length. Um, anyway, I bought the two needle sizes that I would need to knit the adult raglan sleeve pullover pattern. And I knit some gauge swatches. I will show them to you now. So this is the first gauge swatch that I knit. Notice I tried a new technique for knitting a gauge swatch. I added a border. This is a garter stitch border. As you can see, it kind of lays a lot nicer than this um, gauge swatch that I knit without a border. When you knit a gauge swatch in stockinette, it just wants to roll up everywhere. So I, I kind of took that lesson from this gauge swatch and in the next one I knit, I added this garter stitch border which allows for much easier measuring of your stitches. So yes, I knit this gauge swatch with the eight millimeter needles. And I measured, I was supposed to have 11 stitches in 10 centimeters. And this swatch gave me 10 stitches in 10 centimeters. So I knew this was too big. And at this time I didn't have any other needle sizes similar to eight millimeter. The closest needle size I had was six millimeters, which was meant to be used for the ribbing of this sweater. But anyway, that's all I had. So then I knit a gauge swatch in the six millimeter needle, which is too small. I'm supposed to have 11 stitches per 10 centimeters. And in my gauge swatch I knit with the six millimeter needles, I had 12 stitches in 10 centimeters. So that means my needle size is too small. So I determined I needed something between an eight and a six. Based on the math, I figured I needed something exactly in the middle of these two. I needed a seven millimeter needle. At the time that I realized I needed a seven millimeter needle, I was on kind of a trip with my partner. We were visiting his family, so uh, I was nowhere near a yarn store that sells Luke needle tips. So I borrowed a set of needles, this lovely bamboo needle set in a 6.5 millimeter size. 6.5 is a little smaller than what I thought I needed, but this was the only needle size I could find. Um, so this is what I used to knit my next gauge swatch which again was too small. I think I had 10 and a half stitches in 10 centimeters. So really I needed the seven millimeter needle. So I waited until I got back home. I went to my yarn store and I picked up the seven millimeter um, needle tips. These ones are darker for some reason. Like the wood itself is darker than my other tips. Um, just for comparison, it might be hard to see, but anyway, I don't know why that is. It's the same driftwood set, but yeah, these ones are just darker for some reason. And I found them to be a little more kind of slippery as well. So maybe it's just the, what do you call that? Like varnish or lacquer or whatever that goes on the wood. Anyway, that is sort of irrelevant. Um, so I knit another gauge swatch in the seven millimeter needles. 
And guess what? It still wasn't meeting gauge. It was still too small. So maybe I need a seven and a half millimeter needle. But at this point, I've already bought three different needles. Actually, I bought four different needles because when I thought I needed the seven millimeter needle to meet gauge, I also bought five millimeter needles for the ribbing because six I thought would be too big. So, okay, I have just purchased four sets of needle tips. I've knit four different gauge swatches and the seven millimeter needles also did not meet gauge. So I thought, you know what? Let me just try one more gauge swatch with the eight millimeter needles and just hope for the best. Maybe if I knit a little tighter, I'll meet gauge. So that's what I did. And guess what? I met gauge with the eight millimeter needles. The original needle size that I used worked, which is great. I'm actually super happy because I was really excited to, to cast on the sweater, um, but it was just sort of a ridiculous process. Um, I don't know what happened with the first gauge swatch. Maybe I was knitting really loosely for some reason, um, but ultimately the eight millimeter needle did work. So it's all good. I can just follow the pattern exactly. Don't need to adjust the needle size. And I went online and I started looking at some inspiration for color work. So I wanted to find a raglan sweater with some color blocking. This one picture that I found online is, I think it was originally posted on Pinterest and I don't even know, I think it's a sweater that you can purchase on Etsy, but I took inspiration from the color blocking in that sweater and thought that I could recreate the same kind of effect with the three colors that I have. So I cast on and I cast on in the gray color. So I'm gonna, the goal is to do gray at the bottom and then a block of the kind of oatmeal color and then the creamy white at the top. And I will kind of continue that pattern for the sleeves as well. So I'll have kind of gray at the base of the sleeve and then the oatmeal up to the white. So I cast on and I've actually made quite a lot of progress on this sweater so far, so I'll show you. Oh, oops, that's the wrong side. Here we go. <laughs> this is what I have knit so far. It is knitting up so quickly because it's a bulky weight yarn. So yes, I knit the um, ribbing at the bottom with my six millimeter needles, and then I switched to the eight millimeter needles for the stockinette stitch. Um, and I knit that in gray. I think I tried to do some math to figure out how far I should knit before switching colors. And I watched a Nimble Needles video on how to change yarn colors well at the end of a row. You may have seen in my I Knit a Sweater video that I had tried switching colors and I was switching them kind of in between the row. So I ended up with these little sort of steps in my work. I wanted this to be very neat, so I obviously switched colors at the beginning of the row. And I think it is just turning out so fun. I love this so far. And yes, the top, I worked the decreases at the top. This is, I guess, how the construction works for a raglan sleeve sweater. Um, you just sort of have like this, this panel is the back, but I'll just show you on the front. This is kind of how um, it's hard to see because like I said, stockinette likes to curl, but yes, it sort of looks like an apron or a smock, but that will go under in the underarms. And then I will knit the sleeve flat separately and then sew it together, I believe. Um, let me stand up. So this is sort of how the sweater is turning out so far and oh my gosh I am so excited this this whole section took me two days to knit which is just incredible that is so fast fast like a heavier weight yarn this bulky weight yarn is knitting up so quickly which is just really fun um when you're progressing this quickly it's just really 
It's so awesome. It's so fun. So yeah, this is kind of where I've gotten to. I did um, cast off the back panel and now I just last night I cast on the front panel. So I've done the ribbing. Oh my gosh, I'm showing you the back again. Okay, here we go. So I've done the ribbing and I finished my gray color block. I just added in the kind of oatmeal color. So I will knit this in stockinette up till the white. I think I just do the exact same thing I did with the back panel for the front. Um, yeah, so I'm just having so much fun with this one. And I'm so excited to do the raglan construction. I think I'm more excited about it now than I will be when I actually get to the point where I have to sew all of the pieces together because sewing is sometimes difficult to start. It feels like a big project, um, but I also do really enjoy sewing. Once I get started, it is a nice, enjoyable process. So I think it will all turn out and oh my gosh i'm just so excited i think this raglan sweater is going to be really fun i love the color blocking and the way it's working out so far the only thing that i'm a little bit concerned about is how much yarn i'll have left over for the sleeves once i finish the front and back panels i'm hoping that i don't run out of yarn i was also hoping when i knit the sleeves that I could sort of match the sweater. So I believe I have about 19 centimeters of the gray at the bottom. And so I would hope that I could knit 19 centimeters of gray for the sleeve as well, but I'm not sure if I'll have enough gray yarn left over to do that on the sleeves. Um, but I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. I'll see how much yarn I have left. Um, as I was knitting this, I was trying to kind of piece together the math so that I could make sure I had enough yarn left over. But um, I also decided that the most important part to me is that those three blocks of color on the main body are all kind of equal size. And if the sleeves aren't exactly matching up with the main body, that's totally okay. If the gray on the sleeves is a little shorter, I think that's fine since you know, how often do you really have your arms down by your sides anyway? It doesn't have to be perfect, but I definitely want the front and back panels to match exactly so that when I sew them together, there's no um, like disconnect between the two panels. So yeah, I think the front and back panel color work or color blocking is the most important. And then sleeves will just kind of do what they do. So yeah, I think that pretty much sums up all of my finished objects and works in progress at the moment. Um, the only other thing that I am thinking about and excited about at the moment is sock knitting, which I mentioned in my last video. I'm still very excited about sock knitting, but haven't actually purchased any materials to start knitting socks yet. I went to my local yarn store just yesterday and I found some sock yarn that I like. I think the only problem with sock yarn in general is that most of the sock yarn that I've seen is either one plain color, which is fine and nice. I think one, one color for socks is great if you're doing like some kind of textural work like lace. Um, but since I have never knit a sock before and I'm a beginner, I would love to knit a really, really basic, simple sock pattern. So I don't really want to do any lace or textural work at this point. I think just a really basic like stockinette or garter stitch, some kind of sock that's really, really simple would be a good place to start for me. But I don't want to knit a really, really simple sock pattern in a really, really simple color yarn. If I'm going to knit a simple sock, I would like a yarn with some like variegated colors or just something with a little more visual interest. I think that's kind of where I've gotten stuck with sock knitting because as soon as I start looking at like really interesting variegated colorful yarns, uh, all the colors are just too bright and vibrant for my liking. 
um, they're like really vibrant like neon yellow or like a bright neon pink or a magenta or like a really deep purple and I personally just don't I don't think I want that much color I don't want a whole sock that's all bright purple um, what I would love is like a neutral kind of base color with some flecks of like a really bright pink or whatever so like a confetti kind of yarn I think would be perfect for me that would really be my style and finally I found two yarns two colorways that I think are like exactly what I'm looking for but they were not in a sock yarn I thought it was a sock yarn because the brand who makes that yarn also does sock yarn but I realized that when I was looking at it, it's just a 100% merino wool so yeah that's not gonna work but I did thankfully I found one of the colors that I like in a sock yarn so now my plan is to purchase that sock yarn and somehow figure out how to knit socks I looked around Ravelry for some really basic easy beginner sock knitting patterns Ravelry has this feature where you can filter for free patterns which is what I did since this is my first time knitting socks and hand dyed sock yarn is quite expensive so if I can save on a sock pattern at least for my first pair of socks I think I'll do that I found a couple different really basic sock knitting patterns that I can use for the yarn that I found. My plan right now is to buy that sock yarn this weekend and try to figure out what needles I want to use. I've been doing some research to figure out whether I should purchase double pointed needles or if I should use circular needles. There's another creator on YouTube and Instagram, Handmade by Florence. Uh, I think her name is Florence Miller. She has made a video all about sock knitting. She has hand knit several pairs of socks and she uses the magic loop method. And I've said in previous videos that I have had really negative experiences with the magic loop, but I'm thinking maybe it would be different if it was a sock. I've tried magic loop for knitting a balaclava and my needle tips were at least five inches long. So maybe if I had shorter needle tips, I would have more success. I don't know. So I'm still trying to figure that out and I'm gonna wait to purchase my sock yarn and needles until I kind of decide whether I wanna go with double pointed needles or circular needles. Um, I also need to figure out whether I could just add a set of needle tips to my Lucia interchangeable needle set or if I should get a different set of needles. I know uh, Florence uses the Chiagu interchangeable needle set, which is a little different. It's a memoryless cord, which I think could be really great. And the needle tips for the Chiagu set are metal needles as opposed to wood. Maybe that's better for, for sock knitting because you have sort of sharper needle tips. So you can, I don't know if that makes knitting easier than if you have a more dull wooden tip. That's possible but I'm also kind of mindful of the sharpness of the needle points on a really small metal needle. I have all these different things to kind of weigh in order to figure out what materials I should purchase for getting into sock knitting um, so that's all gonna be on my mind as I'm knitting my raglan sweater and my spot cowl in the next week or so. Um, I'm trying to film knitting update videos once every week or two. Sometimes it'll take longer if I have a really busy week and don't have much time to knit. I really only want to film a video if I have something to share. So I do knit as much as possible to try to make progress on my projects. And especially this time of year, kind of leading up to the holidays, I'm going to be trying to knit as much as I can to try to get as many gift projects done as possible before the holidays. So yeah, I'm sure I'll be knitting a bunch in the next little while. And I'm really excited to share my progress with you in my next video. Please feel free to subscribe if you wanna kind of tag along and follow my knitting progress. 
on all of these various projects that I'm working on. You can also follow my Instagram, as I mentioned, it's just Heather's Journal, Heather's.Journal. Um, so yeah, you can follow me there. I think that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, as always. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I definitely enjoyed sharing all of my projects with you, and I hope that you are enjoying working on projects of your own. So with that, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, a lovely rest of your week, um, take care. Bye.